And then it was, well, it was pretty much me and whatever other misfit I could find. Oh, wow. You know, so. so forefather every, of the. Uh... Every, everywhere, everywhere I went, I, I tried to, to spread the gospel, you know, and <laughs> I had punk bands in yeah. Guam and also in uh, Maui before. What's that you're playing? You, oh, three chords? Hey, listen, have I got a genre for you? <laughs> <laughs> This video is brought to you by Try the World. We'll hear more about them later, but for now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local and not so local music scene and the people that make it, including me and my guest. And my guest today is the front man for a band that was founded in 1999 on the island of Maui, and uh, we met actually at Chiba Hut during uh, 420. They have a celebration there every year to celebrate all things cannabis, which I did a separate review of that show, uh, which you can find. Just look through all my, you know, look through the videos. You'll find it. Uh, the band plays a blend of ukulele, surf, soul, rock, punk, sea, uh, ska, and reggae. And uh, they like to call themselves Ook and Roll Band. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, with, a, with a message, basically, stay island. Please welcome to the channel Tom from The Easy. Say hi. Aloha. Aloha. So... First of all, welcome. It's only water, but Jeez. it's not an empty toast if you're friends. Oh. So, first of all, thank you very much. Mahalo. Um, I wanted to ask, how, how did the sound develop? Because you started out mostly playing a lot of punk shows, right? On the we, islands? We, we, we mix it up. Yeah, we, we play with that. a blend because we're a blend of yeah, mixed sound. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, originally, I mean, I'm, I'm an older cat and I was a, I was a punk rocker in the eighties Right. coming up. I went to high school in San Jose and I was a punk rocker and then, uh, relocated to Guam. I'm, I'm actually from Guam originally. Oh, I th okay. So, well, I'm, well, I'm from Guam, but then I moved to Maui, Hawaii in the early nineties. How old were you when you went to Maui? Uh, or 18. Okay, so you decided to go. You weren't moved. Uh, well, my, my family moved back because my, on my mom's side, I'm Pacific Islander. So, oh, okay. So the family, after we finished school, we relocated to Guam. Gotcha. Born in Maui. I mean, born in Guam. Born in Guam. But you're Hawaiian. Went, 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 went to school in San Jose mm -hmm. and then uh, eventually ended up on Maui in the early 90s. So was there any sort of like citizenship thing no, it's a, it, it's an American territory. Well, I know that. I yeah. just I know that. Um, I, I remember hearing that Guam sometimes had their own like documentation, yeah. saying like, "No, no, I'm, I'm, Guam American. What's the, <laughs> what's the word? Guamolian. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right. It's it's uh well, it's it depends. You know, there's Guamanian is a word that they do use, but I'm I'm specifically the the native people. I'm Chamorro, is what I am. Chamorro, the native on my mom's side. My mom's. Today I learned. So uh, you spoke about you know being in, in, in the punk scene a lot and, and just in San Jose as well. Um, how would you compare? I, I, I my question says Maui because I didn't know about the Guam thing. But how would you compare the, the punk scene on the islands versus the punk scene in Vegas? Um, well, you know, it, it was it was me. I went back like so when I was eighteen mm -hmm. and I fresh from the streets of Northern California where right. there was a lot of punk and punk was forming. And then it was, well, it was pretty much me and whatever other misfit I could find. Oh, wow. You know, so, so forefather every, of the, uh... everywhere, everywhere I went, I, I tried to, to spread the gospel, you know, and <laughs> I had punk bands in yeah. Guam and also in uh, Maui before. What's that you're playing? You, oh, three chords? Hey, listen, have I got a genre for you? <laughs> um, you're, you're familiar with the whole Ninth Island thing, right? Yes, sir. Yes, For those of you that don't know, Vegas is considered the ninth island because there's mm -hmm. more native-born Hawaiians in Vegas than there are in Hawaii. It's actually, and it's it's actually all the American islands: American Samoa, Guam, oh. and Hawaii. I didn't realize it was all factored in. We just we we found that out. And we thought it was funny because it was just like, huh? <laughs> and we've been to Maui on vacation, but it's not the same as when you live there. But I still miss like Lahaina and uh, Honokawai and, and just just being able to like, where do you want to snorkel today? Not, you know, can we snorkel? 
And it's it's an incredible place. And, it is. And yeah, although I'm from a lot of places, I like to say that that's really where I was born. You know? Right. Well, before we go much further, I, I wanted to draw attention to this shirt I'm wearing. It's uh, Revenge of Room 6. I just recently had uh, my second ever Room 6 Rocks sh uh, song, uh, showcase at Hennessy's Tavern on Freemaster Experience, where I highlight five acts that have been on the channel uh, performing in, up in Room 6 or, or just, you know, being on the channel for an interview. And I say, hey, you want to do a show? And they get to play an actual live set for people that wouldn't normally hear their music because I've had it all here. The reason I'm bringing that up is this is available on my merch store, room6.shop, but also you can catch my review of it coming up here soon. I'll be uh, posting a review of that. And also the live stream is available on the channel right now. If you want to be on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, and someday be part of one of those showcases, hit me up using my email address down in the description or click the Room 6 social media link. That's where you'll find all sorts of ways to support the channel as well. And what the heck, go ahead and subscribe, like, and share while you're down there. It all helps me to make better videos and to help the scene. So thanks. Back to you. Yes. Gotta, gotta do this stuff, you know, YouTuber. Um, can we talk about On the Edge of Dark and Light? Um, um, um yeah. What, 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 what exactly is that? Well, you know, that's, that's, that's just a, the, well, like I said, I'm an older cat. I've lived yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've, I've lived a little bit. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, that, that's what, and I, I like to reflect that in the writing. A lot of, well, a lot coming out of Hawaii, of course, playing ukulele, mm -hmm. people over the rainbow, right? It's, it's that kind of thing. Very happy. Yes. And I, in, in my own thing, building the easy in Maui. Um, I, I like to, to sing about both things. So right. a lot of the song song stuff. It, well, it's funny because in Maui, I've had people in the band over the years, different people, and I had one person once tell me the band is actually too happy for some <laughs> of the songs, and I had another person around the same time tell me the band is actually too dark. So we've been both. Uh, I didn't I, get I, dark for you at all. I will. Uh, it's it's always ukulele, so it's always what they call nahe nahe sweet. It's mm -hmm. really the delivery. You, you can't play angry ukulele. I, you know, I, I can I can play tritones on it. You well, know? okay, granted, can, but without like a, a distortion pedal or something, it's gonna sound sweet. It it it's always gonna be nahe nahe for sure. Right. No, but it's. You know, sometimes I, I write both. I try to write both sides. You know, I'm, I'm in definitely influenced as, as a rocker, as a you can roll guy these days. Yes. Uh, I wanted to, if you don't mind, I want to touch on that real quick. In my intro, I said ukulele. We were talking about ukulele, and you said you can roll. Is it one of is it one of those things? that's kind of like aloha, where it can go like either way. The language things, uh, you know, and I'm I'm not a native speaker of Hawaiian, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, you know. So, so the language of Hawaii, it's a, it's ukulele correctly, correctly like that. Yeah. But I always point that out myself. I'm like, then how can we say uke? You know, it's like it's, but it's one of those language right. things. I just want to be. I don't. I don't want to say way off, but I also I, I want to know when I'm being wrong. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. I, that's you know. All right. Cool. So it it can go either way. It's it's, it's well yeah. It's, it's so far it's I haven't offended. You. No, not at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not easily offended. Wow. Well, um. So I want to talk earliest musical influence because. Boy from Guam to San Jose to like there was a lot of formational uh, or, or foundational you know influences as you got grew up and, and moved around. But what was that first time you said I want to do that? When it came to making music. Um, you know, early, early on, I I come from you know a lot of island families are very musical and mine included. And when we relocated to San Jose, there was already a large contingent of my family from Guam living there. Right. And a big part of the, the thing was family parties. So, you know, for me, I, not so much saying I wanted to do that, but Don Ho, uh, for, hey. for an Islander in Amer in America at the time. You just warmed my heart. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a major thing. You know, right. that would have been someone available and you saw and someone that was heroic. Mm -hmm. And he, know, he was kind of, was he the first, like, Hawaiian superstar? Superstar. Yeah. yeah. Super, I mean, you know. If, if you don't know. Look up Don Ho, just H O. He was he, he had a, he had a career, man. He was yeah, he was like the Elvis of Hawaii. He was yeah, he yeah, internationally famous. His, I know. mean, his music still played there, right? I mean, most of the tourist spots. But my mom actually told me this story that I, I was as 
when, when my time was, was, was due, I was actually conceived to a Don Ho song. I, I know. <laughs> Thanks, Mom! <laughs> yeah, I know. That's... <laughs> yeah. Um, that's, I mean, that's funny. Fortunately, my mom's 88, and, and somehow it hasn't slipped out. But I haven't heard any of those kind of stories, <laughs> fortunately. But um, I'm waiting. I got a 15-year-old. I'm waiting. Okay, okay you got, got some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Let's say, hey, it's that chair. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, um, before we go much further, I want to take a quick moment here to uh, hear a message from future Josh. Uh, if you've been watching any of my videos, you know this is a sponsor spot. If it interests you and you think, hey, that's something I want to look into, please consider using the link down in the um, description. I don't normally preface it this way, but I felt like, you know, let's let's address the uh, elephant in the room. So, take it away, future Josh. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. As some of you know, I enjoy the occasional whiskey on this channel. Tasting and reviewing whiskeys makes me feel so... gourmet. And that goes for trying out food from other countries, too. Sometimes I wish I could take a tasting trip around the world. Fortunately, there's Try the World. Try the World is the first gourmet tour around the world, but with no plane ticket needed. Just go to trytheworld.com and subscribe to receive a gourmet box from a different country like France, Japan, or Brazil every month. Discover a dozen of the best gourmet and cultural finds in each box, accompanied by beautifully illustrated culture guides explaining how to enjoy the food. Their site offers gift boxes, the premium signature boxes, and the very affordable snack boxes. I'm all about the snack box because you get five different snacks from five different countries every month. Normally, snack box subscriptions are 19 bucks a box, but you do get a discount for an annual commitment. That's a price even musicians can afford. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get $10 off your snack box order by entering the coupon code SNACKBOX10 at checkout. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Try the World for being a sponsor, and let's get back to today's show. We're back. So, uh, like I said, if that you know sponsor spot there uh, interested you, please consider clicking the link down in the description. Uh, it, it really does help. Moving on. We talked about earliest musical influence. I want to talk favorite show memory as the easy. Like, what is that memory that just sticks out as either you checked off some rock star little checklist moments or things went off the rails and bass player ended up in jail or what, you know, what happened? You know, it's been, it's been on 1999 when we started. It's mm -hmm. been a long time. And there's been a, a, a bunch of different versions of the easy. Yeah. But this song, this band actually started in 99 with my son and myself, who is currently the drummer of this band. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Wait, how old was he at the time? He was a child at three years old. Drumming. And Well, no, he was oh, a child. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say prodigy. When I, when I decided to start writing these songs and doing this project, right. it was just this, this, this project here, the easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, got a studio, we went in, and the first thing he cut, he said some Chamorro words uh, in front of the thing. And that's how the, the whole project started and then here all these years later he's the drummer in it so yeah no choice kid <laughs> yes so one of my favorite memories mm -hmm. that i have is in somewhere in the first five years of our career on maui um well willie nelson is a big resident of maui he's a famous resident i didn't know that paia side the little beach town on the north shore there i had no idea he's a long time resident there and he was this little small surfer town on the Hana Highway. Yeah. And he uh, he had a club that he was best friends with the owner. He hung out there. He played occasional shows there. Is that the Fleetwood, Mick Fleetwood one? No, this one is called, it was called Charlie's. It's no longer there. Oh, okay. But, so yeah, he had this club. He would play in there. He had a local band and everything. He had two kids who were becoming famous on their own as Promise of the Real, Lucas Nelson. Um, but at the time, they were they were. I'm not they, familiar. I'll have to look them up. Children. Right. Anyways, Willie Nelson uh, does a Christmas show every year, and my band just happened to have a, uh, a Christmas show around the same time, and Willie wanted the date that we had at, this, at the club. So we got the call that Willie wants you to play with him at this club. So Willie my, who? <laughs> Willie, Willie Nelson, the man. Yeah. My Willie Nelson. Will, the Willie Nelson. Yeah. Right? And uh, So, yeah, we ended up going. My son, who at the time mm -hmm. was actually nine, He'd been learning piano, and he learned all these Christmas songs. Christmas show. Uh, so his first show ever was 
opening for Willie Nelson. So I'm not sure he really understood the, Put that on the how cool that was. But yeah, we opened, he opened for us. We opened for, for his, Willie Nelson's kids, Lucas and Nelson, and then Willie came out and played. Uh, for me, it was so epic because I'm actually on my other, my dad's side, I'm half Texan. So. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. uh, Where did that come from? (laughs) Because Texas was not mentioned anywhere. (laughs) Well, it's a complicated, it's a long story. Mm -hmm. Uh, My dad was a U.S. Marine. My mom Ah, was, was was a a local girl from Island Girl. So kind of the classic war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Yeah, opening for Willie Nelson, that was probably one of my favorite moments of ever being in the band. All right, let's get let's get real. So how much pot did you smoke with Willie? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've smoked pot with Willie. Yeah, I smoked a lot of Willie's pot, and I also became friends with his grandson there. So oh. I, we, I would smoke a lot of Willie Nelson pot is what, what it always was. So. Nice. But did you ever get to actually like hang out with him? Yeah, before we play, we went up. There's a card room that he's in up there, and he passes a doobie around. And of course, he does. Yeah, he could certainly afford it. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, the IRS did their best. <laughs> he, 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 this was just a little bit past that debacle, and you could tell already that he he had recovered fully. And by right. now, of course, he just turned ninety the other day. Happy birthday, Willie! Hey, happy happy birthday, English. Um, are were you? Well, you've been here. Were, were you aware at all of the whole Wayne Newton thing? Um, know, his house is like, or was, at uh, uh, Pecos and Sunset. Shenandoah. Uh, yeah. Right over there. Yeah. Right? Unfortunately, not anymore. But, it, like, at one point, you could see the tail of his plane that he had parked on the property to keep yeah. it from the uh, the tax man. I, I, love, I love finding all these old Vegas homes and stories. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, from... from from chili cook-offs at, at the Maui Country Club to 420 at Chiba Hut, you're not afraid to play the places with the food. <laughs> Spicy or nah? Spicy, definitely. Yeah? Spicy. Yeah, very, Guam has the hottest food in the land, so... Does it really? It's famous for very hot food. I thought that was uh, Thai. Thai. It's very similar to Thai food, It's but yeah, Guam is very known for, for hot food. Pika. Pika, we call it. Pika. Pika. Pikachu. Uh, I'm. Uh, I can handle some spice, but no, except for that man over there off camera, my uh, my producer, <laughs> my father-in-law. Uh, except for him, nobody else in the house can handle spice at all. I mean, like Taco Bell mild sauce is is too much, and so we like food, we like flavor, but we don't do the spice, we don't do the pika, and so every so often I'll, I'll just torture myself and I'll get it somewhere else. Like yeah. If Dad gets to go, uh, you know, have dinner by himself, and be like, "What do I want that's gonna wake me up?" And I regret it. <laughs> yeah, right. Because <laughs> I'm not. It's a conditioning thing. Go for the Diablo sauce then. Next time, <laughs> Diablo. Right? Oh, but see, I, I can't be in the bathroom all night. <laughs> it, it, you know, even even if you eat hot stuff a lot, it's the same effect on everyone. It's hot on me. It's torturous. I know. It's the endorphin thing, right? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. I don't understand the whole. I'm, I'm eating, I'm punishing myself. Like I'm eating, you know, once you get to like the ghost pepper and all those crazy ones, millions and millions of Scoville's, I don't, how can it, how, there, there's no, how can you get flavor? Don't mess with those extracts. That's the lesson. Oh, no. I learned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stay away from extracts, right? No. Yes. I used to watch a lot of hot ones from yeah. China and, and uh, I would hear people say that. Anyway, sorry, back to music. So, <laughs> uh, speaking of which. Stick around. We're going to be seeing a music video, I believe. Sure. We're going to be seeing a music video from the Easy, uh, and after that, I'll see you in the outro. But last question: You made it. You ready? Yes, sir. Cool, cool. Uh, let's pretend we're talking to Little Q. Room Sixers, you know, this is, I ask this of all my friends. This is my 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 go-to question to finish things out usually, but it, it, it's been really enlightening. We're going to circle back to that first question about earliest musical influence. And we're going to talk to new musicians or, or talk to little you. What is one thing you wish you could tell little you who's like, I want to do that about this long twisted road that is making music and, and uh, don't say change your strings. <laughs> but what is one piece of advice that you would like to give to the, the new, new, new people who have no clue what's in store for them? Practice makes perfect. Put in your 10,000 hours. You got to practice a lot. You, mm. you got to play. I, I, I always wish that, 
I was more proficient, you know, I, I was, I want to be on the jazz level and, right. you know, I want to be able to improvise, you know, I can write songs and I can punk rock and I can reggae, but I, I would like to be better. And I think a lot of older cat musicians I meet are like, you always want to be better. Yeah. The better you get, the more you want to learn. Uh, you're not afraid to branch out. Like I'm always impressed with, I've used this analogy before, this, uh, this comparison before, Sting. That man makes me wish I was practicing right now. Like, why am I not learning a new thing right now? Because um, he plays so many. And Dolly Parton, yeah. if you, are, you know, how, like two hour show. She puts up. She plays nine instruments. Yeah, see, that's like, damn. <laughs> you got you to play a lot. You know, you got to you got to practice yeah. practice a lot. And practice when you're young is is the time to do it. Right. You got the time and. Yeah. Oh, believe me. By the time I realized that I would have told you know. Back then, I would have totally been willing to like live in my car, to go on tour, to you know, to do all that stuff. I and instead, I you know, now I have a degree and I have a family and I'm happy. Damn it! And it's hard to be a songwriter when you're happy, <laughs> unless you're you know the easy, the dark and light thing, right? <laughs> the yeah, dark and light. Saying. Right on. Well, hey, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being on the channel. Uh, kind of a short one today because we didn't have a band with lots of rabbit holes to go down. But hope you enjoyed. And again, if you want to be on the channel. Hit me up. Um, if you want to see more of this guy and what he's doing with the band, check out the links down in the description. I put all their uh, social media links down there. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, temporarily say goodbye, and I'll see you in the outro. Temporarily say goodbye. Aloha. Aloha. ba da ba ba da ba Swim! I want to thank Tom from The Easy for coming by. It was a great interview and an awesome music video. 
Like I said, if you want to be on the channel, hit me up using the email address or the Room 6 social media link down in the description. And if you want to know more videos like, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you'd like to subscribe, click up there and don't forget to ring the bell so you get notified. You know the drill. And if you want to hear my own music, which is mostly light, not so much dark, click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Mahalo.